It's funny when you haven't read something in 30 years how your mind plays tricks on you. Apocalypse Sun from the Age of Apocalypse. When I was reading Air of Apocalypse number one and I saw him, the first thing I was like, oh, it's Holocaust. But I was like, no, he's calling himself genocide. And I'm like, huh, was I remembering wrong? I was not remembering wrong. His name was Holocaust during the Age of Apocalypse. When he came to the 616, they changed his name to genocide. So I was right. But, you know, I questioned myself, which I shouldn't have. And I will say that this book has some twists and turns in it. And I'm like, wow, huh. it's kind of ballsy, especially if they don't put the toys back in the toy box. Like, whew, there's one character. I'm like, man, please don't do this. But then a part of me is like, you have some balls if you do, though. My name is Dorian. This is SEO Comics. We are continuing our coverage of Air of Apocalypse with number two. So our story starts off with the last one left off with genocide, aka Holocaust, wrecking shop in an Egyptian city. And he's like, there's no need for this contest. I'm the rightful heir of Apocalypse. This is what the hell I do. I cleanse the earth. Don't believe me? Watch. And he's about to fricassee this dude when all of a sudden his arm gets stopped and somebody goes, I never saw you, Kokoa. And it's Exodus and Mirage. So Exodus is like, this child is strong. My telekinesis power is an unrivaled on earth, and yet and still, I can barely hold him. So the genocide screams, I am not a child. So he's like, your weakness seeped into my father's bones like a pestilence, and I'm the cure. Yeah, he's definitely Apocalypse Son. So then we cut to Sinister, and he goes, as Sinister always does, I'll let you rough and tumble types handle this little altercation. Then he walks over to Armageddon Girl, who used to be Nature Girl, so it's another one who had a name that got changed into something else. He pats her on the back of the neck and she goes, ow. And he's like, good luck out there, my little eco terrorist. Eco terrorist is two words, not one word. How, how the hell does he get past editing? Anyway, you can see the little mini syringe in his hand. So she doesn't even notice it because like ever since she became like Armageddon girl, she's been on one. And she's just like, don't touch me, defiler. Ever since you do your little genetic abuse, you betray the earth and she just tells him to stay away so then she goes off and she's about to try to fight holocaust all of a sudden she's like i don't feel so well holocaust wastes no time to hit her right in the face with a blast so then they do a flashback where they show her and she just killed all these poachers and apocalypse saw that and was like huh, that's exactly what the hell i need and that's why she's in the contest but right now she looks dead 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 so in a sense, it's like, oh, Genocide's Blast didn't just take out Armageddon Girl, but it also weakened this building's foundation, and it's about the fall of all these people in it. Sinister ain't shit. Like, <laughs> he is a true and true bad guy. Like, he ain't shit. So Emma Frost and Laura Kinnear are trying to do what they can to try to evacuate the people out. And then Emma's like, Exodus, a lot of people are about to horribly die without your assistance. You're an Omega-level mutant, right? Act like one. And he goes to Harlot's right. <laughs> oh, my God. Damn, Exodus! Like, you pretty much is like, she's a hoe. You know she's a hoe. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but if you look up the definition of harlot, it means prostitute. Prostitute, it means hoe. So he uses his powers, grabs Genocide, throws him into the building, and out the other side. So Doug is trying to help out with the evacuation. That's Cypher. And he's talking to this child, an Egyptian. And all of a sudden, this piece of a building is about to fall on them. He knows they can't get out the way in time. So he tells her pretty much to close her eyes. Everything's going to be okay. And then Monet comes out of nowhere, punches the hell out of the piece. And she's like, being invulnerable is great in this situation. Being able to speak any language is really not. So you might want to get out the way. So they do a flashback with Monet. She was on a date with Quicksilver. If you don't know why Monet and Quicksilver are dating, I don't worry, I got you covered. It happened in Uncanny Avengers. Playlist will be in the description. Anyway, she pretty much tells Apocalypse that uh, she sent Quicksilver to get some kind of coffee that's on some mountain that's in uh, Japan. And uh, pretty much she got 10 seconds to say what he got to say. So then all of a sudden, Cypher and the Egyptian child start to float on a piece of rock. Reason being is because of Richter. He's trying to get as many people out of here as safely as possible. But then Genocide comes over and he goes, nowhere on earth is safe for me, Rock Wilder. 
So then Richter does what he does and pretty much takes a whole bunch of rocks and pile it on Genocide. And he's like, hopefully that'll hold him down, but you know it's not. Genocide pretty much powers out of there and then he blasts Richter and it looks like he blasts him straight in his face. So then Cable, who goes way back with Richter, starts busting on Genocide and is like, if that some bitch just killed Richter? And then Forge, who also has history with Richter, is like, more and later, <laughs> Right now, the file that we have on this dude don't even do him justice. So the Exodus, he's like, if this is meant to be a test, and it seems to be I'm the only one that's worthy. So he starts grabbing every civilian that he can and starts levitating them out of there. And then we do a flashback. So Exodus is still tripping how he was supposed to lead all the mutants through the desert to the promised land, and he just led them to ruin. And he's at this old Krakoan gate that's all withered and died. And he turns around and he's like, great Satan, Arako's up above in the heavens while the rest of us are down here waiting in purgatory. Now, as I was reading this, I'm like, Exodus, do you remember what happened in X-Men 35? Like, do, do we have to revisit that? And Apocalypse pretty much beat you down, like <laughs> beat, beat, beat down. But Apocalypse was like, you know what? How about this? If you don't like me so much, then why don't you set out to be a better me? And that's why he's in this contest. So Cable, who is still busting shots at Genocide, as Cable do bust shots, he's like, Scanners tell me that Exodus has relocated everybody into a one mile radius. So that means we can unload on this dude. So the Genocide is like, you're proving my point. That's what I'm talking about. You're worried about collateral damage. I'm just worried about getting the job done. But then Gorgon comes out of nowhere and slices the hell out of Genocide. So Monet, Emma, and Laura Kenny jump up out of nowhere. And Emma's like, we need to do this for Richter girls and poor little Lin Lee. For those who don't know, that's Armageddon girl. So they attack Genocide simultaneously. Gorgon still hacking and slashing at him. And he goes, your armor makes you slow and vulnerable. <laughs> and Genocide is like, this show is not to protect me. This show is to protect you. But that's okay. I'll just go ahead and take this off and go ahead and burn the whole world. So Monet transforms into penance and goes, keep your clothes on, pervert, and jumps on genocide. And it's like, I can't keep this dude down by myself. I'm going to need some help. Exodus comes out of nowhere. It's like, this trial ends now. They're looking at him like, what are you doing? And he hits both genocide and Monet with some kind of huge blast. And they're both gone. So Forge is like, oh my God, Monet. Emma's just screaming like, you bastard. Exodus doesn't even bat an eyelash. She guys, Monet knew exactly what the hell she was signed up for when she decided to do this. So don't feel bad. So Doug and Mirage is crying. Emma is just all over Exodus. She's like, you can control matter at a cellular level and you couldn't push her out the way. Her blood's on your hands. And Exodus, again, doesn't even bat an eyelash. She's like, again, she signed up for it. She knew what she was getting into. So don't blame me so sinister comes out of nowhere it's like wow did i miss it all and he takes his hand that has a whole little syringe hits exodus in the back of the head exodus is like what did you do and falls over so exodus pretty much turns to ash and then sinister's like oh it seems like there was an upper limit to his powers after all so cable's like i'm going to blow this bitch's head off but then laura's like not if i stab him first so now we cut to Arako, and Apocalypse is like, man, I didn't expect this many people to be out by now. He's like, maybe I shouldn't have lured Genocide to this contest. But all of a sudden, all you hear is, you're going to regret more than that, Apocalypse. And it's Archangel. He crashes through the window. And he's like, I told you, I told you, I was not going to let you change people's lives like you did mine. So Apocalypse pretty much looks at him and was like, I like your conviction, and I hope you're ready to die for that conviction. And all I'm thinking to myself is like, I don't think you were there for the beatdown that Apocalypse gave to X-Men, but it's alright. You're going to be front and center for this one. 